G'day lads, welcome to what I watched in July. So first, I watched X2, or X-Men 2 as it's known. I watched this one past midnight with my neighbor and good friend Stejov. And this definitely holds up. The practical sets, the grainy film look, the perfect cast. Maybe one or two plot points don't make sense under scrutiny, but I love how you can see these movies as an analogy for so many things in life. This one's probably the best out of the original trilogy. Then I watched A Quiet Place Day One. Gotta say, I was a bit disappointed by this. Lupita Nwong is absolutely brilliant, as you'd expect, but Joseph Quinn's character was incredibly frustrating for me and a lot of plot points were inconsistent and just really didn't make sense. It really took me out of the film. Then I watched Checkmates. This was part of the Spanish Film Festival here in Melbourne, Australia. Dad picked this out to watch because we're both in a chess and uh, I have to say I absolutely loved it. With any comedy, there's a few jokes that don't land. My dad wasn't a big fan of this, but for me, this had the perfect balance of comedy and human emotion at its core. They don't make comedies like this anymore in mainstream Hollywood, and it's such a great love letter to chess. Really reminded me of my own primary school experiences in a chess club. And I really do wish that more people would watch this film and discover it. Then I watched War for the Planet of the Apes. I don't think it was good as Dawn, but it was still pretty decent. The CGI, of course, was amazing. They're always cooking with that, and it had some epic moments. Uh, finished the story reasonably well. I don't think Woody Harrelson was the right choice for the villain role, though, and I do agree that the story is a little small scale for the finale of the trilogy. Then I watched the Salad Fingers 20th Anniversary Special, which you can check out here on YouTube. I loved watching this series growing up and I'm really glad that it's still going. While this largely retreads over the past episodes, it does this in a creative way and still builds that spooky atmosphere that David Firth does so well. Then I watched Eyes Wide Shut. I saw this with my girlfriend on a date right before we made things official and I do actually think that this is a great film to bring a partner to. I know, look, I know some people might laugh at that, but I really think that it can evoke some great discussion on relationship dynamics. While it's quite long, this is another Kubrick classic, one I really look forward to revisiting one day. Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise are the perfect casting for this. They're absolutely amazing in these respective roles. And yeah, it was so good to get to see it on a cinema screen and to take a trip back to the late 90s. Highly recommend. Then I watched Kinds of Kindness with my friend Jack, who normally loves Yorgos Lanthimos films. Probably my hottest take for the month but I really dislike this. I find most Yorgos films I've seen to be like <sighs> listening to nails on a chalkboard. They're so often unpleasant and quite bleak. Some of the gore in here, uh, I just really didn't want to see. The pacing and runtime as well was pretty tough to bear. The opening story, The Three, was pretty intriguing, but for me, the film went steadily downhill from there. Then I watched X-Men The Last Stand. Now, I hadn't gone back to these X-Men films since I watched them on my iPod Touch in 360p back in 2012. And I'm very aware that that is a serious cinema crime to have watched them like that. Definitely a lot wrong with this, with some of the plot points, especially surrounding Gene and the ending, a lot of it doesn't really make sense. But at the same time, I do love how this film's willing to kill off major characters, the humor, the characters themselves, the cast of course, the practical action set piece elements, all of that make it something that I'd probably still choose to return to over a lot of other superhero movies these days. Then I watched After Hours. This is an underrated, underseen, Scorsese classic that deserves to be in the conversation as his best 
film. A great wacky movie that felt like to me what Ari Aster's Bo is Afraid should have been. It's got a brilliant sense of humor and really explores that feeling of having a bad night out on the town in those hours after midnight really well. I also found myself listening to the soundtrack into the ground all month. Prioritize watching this film if you can. Then I watched X-Men Origins Wolverine. Another hot take from me, I know guys, but I love this. People can complain all they like about how this doesn't respect or adhere to their comic book expectations, but I really think that if you can detach from that and just enjoy it as the film that it is, it actually has a lot to offer in terms of entertainment. The action scenes are epic, Hugh Jackman is the GOAT, and even though, yes, there is some dodgy CGI, the grainy film look makes it look way more aesthetically pleasing than a lot of newer MCU films. And it also has Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas in it. I mean, how can you not love that, guys? I'm a big Black Eyed Peas fan from back in the day. Then I watched X Men First Class. Now, this wasn't as impressive or amazing as I remember from when I watched it as a teenager about 10 years ago, but it's still pretty good. The integration with history and the Cuban Missile Crisis I think is so well done. The origins of the X-Men are done in a pretty cool way. Uh, just some more of the epic moments didn't hit as hard for me as they once did. And I do think maybe this is a little bit more targeted towards teenagers. Um, and yeah, also the Beast CGI just looks really weird here. Then I watched Deadpool and Wolverine. At first coming out of this, I wasn't entirely positive. I thought it was okay, but I'd say that I probably only found 60% of the jokes funny. The rest of the humor for me was pretty cringeworthy, but in retrospect, I've come around to this a lot more. Once again, Hugh Jackman is the goat, and I think that they handled his character really well and didn't ruin it. So overall, yeah, I would say this movie is a pretty fun ride. I do just wish they do some parts of the action in a practical way rather than making it all CGI. I mean, would it kill you to just have a little bit of practical blood splatter instead of the whole thing just being CGI? Please, please. Then I watched Doctor Who, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, and Empire of Death. Really disliked this and found it very disappointing, I've got to say, guys. The same feeling that I've had for pretty much all of this newer season of Doctor Who, and I don't know if I'll be watching the next one. The writing and direction just, just feels incredibly poor. The plot points of the story don't hold up at all under a microscope. There's just so much wrong with this, and it's a real shame shame because I really do believe that Chudi Gatwa had the potential to be a great doctor. I'm just not convinced that the people behind the show will make the right creative decisions in future. So that was my month. A lot of X-Men, a lot of movies, and a lot of fun. Please subscribe for more funky film content and thanks to Carsten Runquist who obviously inspired this video.